So uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the future of immersive computing. And I think we're really truly at a, at a new age of, of computing and, and humans and, and information merging. Um, but before I go into the future, I wanted to talk a little bit about the past because I think it's important to understand all the things that we're seeing today, these were dreamed about uh, you know, years ago. Uh, Morton Helig back in 1962 developed the Sensorama. This was a fully immersive cinematic experience, included olfactory, sound, sight. Uh, Ivan Sutherland, who's one of my heroes, you know, created one of the first head-mounted displays back in uh, 1968. And I think maybe a lot of you might not know that back in 1988, in a small office in Sausalito at Autodesk, uh, Aaron Lanier, uh, Eric Gulichin all created one of the very first virtual reality uh, CAD-based programs called Siberia. And uh, this is really interesting. This is very old footage. Uh, a, he's got a polemus glove there navigating through uh, AutoCAD at the time. So I think it's important to say all this because everything else that we're seeing today, everything old or everything is new is old is new again. And what's really changed is the power of computing. Um, Today in our back pockets, we have what would be considered supercomputers of the past. Um, and these new devices are going to have embedded AI in them. Uh, they're going to have all sorts of sensors that are going to be able to um, look at the world. This is the new iPhone 10 uh, that will be able to see in three dimensions, uh, correct things, have light, um, and then do processing of artificial intelligence actually on the chip. So, um, so what's happened is that our devices have gotten really sophisticated. And uh, we're going to see more computing power over the next couple of years than we've seen in the entire history of humans. And this power in computing, graphics, new input interfaces is going to give us the ability to be more efficient, to be more productive, and to really merge with digital information to understand things that we never could. And so that's sort of the pivot of my talk today. Um, obviously, there's the terms augmented and mixed reality. I'm really interested in how these technologies can help us across the broader spectrum and how they can help us experience our designs as if they're built and operating to be able to understand uh, and predict information about our projects and the information that we ensue. And today, as many of you know, we're seeing entirely new methods of production, new methods of automation, which are leading ways to mass customization. So there's a huge convergence of technology that's happening. And I think this is the exciting thing to see. Um, as well, thanks to Autodesk moving a lot of our software into the cloud, we've really enabled our customers to interact and collaborate on very complex information across devices, across platforms, and across borders. So the world's really become flat. And yes, we're seeing people starting to implement augmented mixed and virtual reality experiences, doing that collaboratively again with very complex information. Um, so digitization of data and access to technology is a revolution in business. And what I think it's important to remember that what's normal today will soon be obsolete, and what's innovative will soon be expected. And AR and VR to us is just really another type of input display and device. We don't really care as long as they plug into our you know, software. Um, but these technologies are not going to change what you do, they'll change how you do it. And I think that's really important as well to remember because it's really about enabling connected, immersive, interactive, real-time experiences into these. And so we're looking at how this can enable new workflows for design, for make, and for use. Um, and to give you an example, you know, VR is really a great design tool. It's a great design collaboration tool. It's a great tool for training, for remote systems control. And AR, as we get into the field with construction and manufacturing processes, will help us put our digital information in context to the built environment. So I'm going to go through some industry examples. And I might skip over some of this, because I know the timing I want to be on to. Um, but one example is really looking at how we can enhance productivity. This was done with Skylight as a Google Glass, um, as a maintenance operator had to look at information. And they did comparisons to paper versus being able to see all of that information in front of you and in situ. And what was amazing about this is this led, I believe, to a 34 or 35% increase in productivity just by overlaying information digitally onto this device.
Now, imagine building without any plans. So Cody Nowak of Martin Brothers actually used the HoloLens to overlay directly these digital informations. Didn't use a tape measure, didn't use any plans. This was all done through straight point of view to lay out a bathroom pod. Um, and this was all done, again, just leveraging digital information in context to the job at hand and really helped them do something that they wouldn't otherwise been able to do. Newport News is one of the largest shipbuilding uh, companies, and they do, you know, uh, these naval ships and these, uh, these submarines here. And one of the things they were doing was inspection with temporary steel structures. The average time uh, with a paper-based world took them 36 hours per section of a ship. By implementing augmented reality to just be able to color code the temporary steel, they went from 36 hours to 90 minutes in inspection. So this is all about enhancing productivity, enhancing fluency. The mill developed this uh, chassis, which was augmenting a body of a car on top of the chassis. And this was shown at Seagraph, and this enabled them to actually have real-time interactive film happening. So normally you would shoot a film, you would composite that, and you'd have to do all that over again. They're doing all of this in real time. So this is almost like an interactive, configurable film. We're going to have probably 20 to 30 years of knowledge workers retiring over the next five or 10 years. And with them, all that information is going to go with them. So virtual reality has a big opportunity to train people, train people from a muscle memory perspective, and even to be able to do things they couldn't see. In this case, they're simulating airflow as they have to replace a filter. So this is giving them a lot more cognition and information about the context of how that filter will interact with all of the fans and the airflow. So I hope you guys can understand these things are not just about cool or amazing or Iron Man. It's about being useful. It's about increasing productivity. And it's about enhancing humans' fluency with technology. Now, this is all great. But most of the things that we're seeing today are one-offs because it's very expensive takes a lot of time and a lot of money to get normally and traditionally to get all of this rich information. If I wanted to get a massive building or a CAD model, gamers do this by default. These, these have hundreds of millions of polygons, lots of objects. If I'm putting these into augmented or virtual reality experiences, it, we're seeing that it's taking a lot of time and a lot of money. Well, the good news is at Autodesk, we're developing solutions like Revit Live which now allows an architect just from within inside of Revit to simply click a button and optimize all of that rich information from the BIM model, not just the geometric data, the materials, the, the metadata, and all of this, to have an interactive experience and to walk their clients through all of this building and uh, to be able to do that as well with, I guess I'm a little out of sync here, sorry. So they're able to walk people through these buildings, but also go into virtual reality. They can play what-if scenarios with the time of day, with a sun slider, um, and doing all of this information interactively without any experience in programming and any experience in game engines or all of the other things that people are using. And yes, Autodesk VRED is a, uh, usually used for industrial designers and for automotive. And this is enabling people to collaborate across borders on rich information Cars are usually using uh, clay samples. They use clay today. Craftsmen create clay models uh, to, to do design reviews. This is enabling fully interactive design reviews to be done collaboratively across borders, and again, to play what-if scenarios and to go through really complex information. Autodesk 360 allows you to render stereo panoramas that can be used on a cardboard, Google Cardboard, which is a very low offset device that you can actually send to somebody on a mobile device, doesn't require any powerful computing, and allows them to basically render these interactive experiences mobily. So there's a whole range of immersion that you can get from very low end with the Google Cardboard all the way up to an HTC Vive where you're in room, you know, room control. So one of the things we just announced this week was around Autodesk Forge. Autodesk Forge is all about connecting people, processes, and information. It's really a set of services that people can leverage uh, to, do different in, to do different things. To give you an example, here was a car seat that was developed in one of our CAD products. 
And this was also using the Forge Viewer API along with the Forge Data Connectivity API to connect cost information so that I could actually interactively filter by materials, by cost, and to understand information a lot more in context. On Monday, we announced the AR VR toolkit for Forge, which is now live on beta.autodesk.com. And this is all about providing rich examples, experiences, code samples that you can leverage to directly pull your data into AR and VR experiences to make it easier and to really remove the friction that we have uh, for our customers. A couple of the research projects that we're looking out uh, into the future are really looking at things like designing in virtual reality, um, giving people a lot more context and a lot more fluidity without having the preserve of expertise. So this was a, a project that our interns did where they were able to interactively lay out uh, the interior of a house. Um, he was also an ergonomics expert, so we looked at things like task performance and availability. But imagine being able to lay out a, a city charrette or do a factory this way or do an interior of a house. So it's, again, increasing that productivity. In fact, we took the next uh, level of this was really looking at how this might work within digital twins in laying out a factory and simulating that factory with industrial physics. So this is where we actually created a digital twin of the entire factory, um, took industrial physics to stream all of that information from inventors, factory design suite, into an interactive real-time simulation. So what you see here is a fully simulated factory, everything from the robots, the machines, the equipment parts, and even the forklifts running around. But unlike an animation that would be done in a game or a movie, which you'd have a hard time understanding if this is actually how the factory operates, this is a true industrial physics simulation of a real digital twin of a factory. So this gives you understanding of how the assembly lines work, how feeds and speeds of a machine would work, and really maybe in the future looking at how we would lay that factory out to increase productivities. In fact, our team at uh, Pier 9 in the Advanced Robotics Lab, and I suggest you guys check out the exhibit hall, created a digital twin of our robotics lab, and they're looking at how they can use these things between uh, VR and the actual robots to program robots, to simulate them, to do remote, uh, uh, re remote maintenance on them, and to really understand how to interact between these two. So this is a uh, additive uh, metal welding, and you can't see what's going on inside of that end effector, so by seeing that in virtual reality, they can do spot checks and see how accurate that information is. And down at the exhibit hall, we have been looking at AR for construction, really looking at how today people use paper. Um, thanks to BIM 360, they now are enabling tablets on the field to create issues. But the problem is they actually have to know where they are in the model or in the plan to do that. And so we're looking at with HoloLens, the ability to just walk up, and this was done over a three-day hackathon in Israel, and to just use voice to create an issue. That issue then gets localized back to the BIM model. So we're removing the friction of requiring a contractor, a subcontractor, to actually go through these models and to figure out where they are and to remove errors. So this automatically takes a picture and does all of that and then localizes it to the, to the actual model. HoloLens is a bit of a fragmented device, so on the exhibit hall floor, we're using ARKit with Apple's new uh, iPad to do the exact same thing. And we're actually taking it a step further because we're using artificial intelligence through BIM IQ to actually recognize issues. So in this case, there's bolts with squirts that tell you how the tension has been bolted down. This was just a photograph that's run through our AI and the machine learning, and then what that does is it's able to come back and overlay an issue just to recognize if a bolt is missing or tension wasn't properly applied. This isn't 3D information, this is RFIs and, and creating issues and being able to do this frictionlessly as if you were a contractor in the field with just a standard tablet device. So we're looking at all of this stuff to enhance productivity, and then this is now going back into the digital model, so you have a bi-directional flow between the data that's created. So in summary, immersive computing enables us a fluency in how we explore digital information in context to the real world, and it's this fluency that increases the bandwidth between humans, digital information, and the machines that we work with in every day. 
And in this sense, AR and VR give us a, a superpower. It gives us an agency to experience the future before it happens, to see the unseen, a sixth sense. Thank you.